Hello, Bethel. Welcome to Optimal Breathing. Hi, glad to be here. And happy Mother's Day. Hope you had a Thank time. you. Great. So what are we talking about today? So today I thought we would talk a little bit about working with people who have maybe PTSD or anxiety or things of that nature. Great, great. So you're a trauma-informed breathwork facilitator, right? Yes. So what does it mean and uh, how does that set you apart from other facilitators? Sure. So um, there are different schools of breathwork, different thoughts. Um, and some of them, like uh, maybe Wim Hof, for instance, are very much focused on um, maybe building more of physical resilience, maybe building athletic endurance and that kind of thing. Um, and that's really wonderful. That's definitely something that breathwork can help with, but it doesn't necessarily take into account um, the needs of people who have experienced a lot of trauma. Um, and those would be people who have PTSD or maybe experience a lot of anxiety or maybe they have panic attacks. So when we do trauma-informed breath work, what sets us apart is that we come in with a really good understanding of what these people tend to experience. Um, and we're very, very careful to create an environment of safety for them, make sure that they feel very comfortable, um, that they feel like they can trust us and build a lot of rapport with them. Um, and then there are a few other key things that we try to set up with the breather before we ever take that first um, step into breath work. Um, number one is we want to make sure that they understand that they have a voice and they have choice throughout the session. So if there is something that doesn't feel good to them in their body or in their system, they know that they have the choice to just not do that. They can just continue as they are and just kind of ignore my cues if it doesn't feel right to them. Um, they also need to know that they have sovereignty. They have sovereignty over their body and they get to be in charge of the session and of the experience that they have. Um, and that really helps them to feel empowered and feel like um, they have some say in what's going on and they have control over the situation, which can be really, really helpful for those people. Um, and then as a facilitator, um, I make sure that I really track what's going on in their nervous system and what's going on with them physically and emotionally. Um, but at the same time, I make sure that I take time even before the session to make sure that I am very grounded um, and that I have a very calm presence for them so that if they are having a little bit of an experience that maybe is pushing the boundaries of comfort for them, I can kind of be that centered, grounded presence in the room, helping them um, to get through that experience safely and gently. Um, so those are the big things that set us apart. And then another thing that could probably take up an entire hour conversation <laughs> um, is that trauma-informed breathwork is rooted in something called polyvagal theory. Um, and so a lot of people have heard about the sympathetic nervous system and the fight or flight response that's bandied about quite a bit. Um, and then we know about the, the rest and digest side of the nervous system, but there's actually a lot more um, variables and a lot more nuance to that. So it's also for a trauma-informed breathwork facilitator being really aware of where they are because someone who's having a trauma reaction, they could be going into that fight response or they could have that flight response, but they could also go clear to the other end of the nervous system and they could shut down. So they might have an experience of dissociating or they might black out or they might faint. So um, our job is to be tracking them really carefully and notice any initial signs, like the very first signs that they might be having a response. And right. if that is happening, then we can step in and help bring them back to center um, and make sure that um, they don't have an uncomfortable experience. Great. So, um, so who would benefit from a trauma-informed uh, breathwork? Um, 
actually everybody would um, because everybody experiences trauma in their life. Sometimes it's little T trauma, sometimes it's big T trauma. Um, so it's helpful really for anyone experiencing breath work, but most especially it's helpful for those people who have a background with a lot of trauma. And those are very often the people who are diagnosed with PTSD or have chronic anxiety or panic attacks, hmm. those kinds of things. Those are the people who really, really um, benefit from this approach. Wow. So mostly like veterans or who have right. stress. Okay. Right. Yeah. Veterans are definitely a big group of people that fit in that category. Um, anyone who has a history of um maybe childhood abuse or right. um, those kinds of things um, are definitely people who benefit. Okay. That's awesome. So, um, so what can happen for someone with uh, PTSD or anxiety or panic attacks if they experience breathwork outside of a trauma informed approach? Yeah. So um it can really kind of blow them out of the water. If they were to go to say like a holotropic breathwork event where they have you breathe for hours and it's right. very, very intense, that could actually re-traumatize that person. And it could leave them at the end of the session feeling like, what just happened to me? I don't know what that was. And that was way too much for my system to handle. And it might scare them away from participating right. in breathwork in the future. So, um, yeah, that's why it's really important to, to go slow and gentle with those people um, as they begin their breathwork journey. Great. So what's, uh, what's it like, like the window of tolerance, as you call it, and how do you expand it? Right. So the window of tolerance um, kind of refers back to what we were just talking about. It's yes. basically referring to how much a person can handle mm -hmm. um, as they begin that breathwork journey. So if someone has a lot of trauma and is very easily triggered, we need to be really careful to start with a gentle breathing pattern that is not super activating. We need to choose something that is calming to the nervous system that helps them feel what safety is in their body. Right. Um, and a lot of times we'll just start with a short time span. So instead of doing a full hour session with somebody, I might just do 15 minutes or I might just spend time showing them a few different breath patterns and have them try each one for 30 seconds to a minute just to see how that lands in their body and how that feels for them. Um, and they may not be able to do all of the different breath patterns at first. They may only be able to do the really calming ones. But the more they begin to do breath work, that ability will open up. So it will open that window of tolerance and they may be able to do a more activating pattern or they may be able to breathe longer. Um, and they'll, it's just like any kind of exercise. You build up your endurance, you build up your muscles. It kind of retrains the nervous system gradually um, and they're able to handle more and more. Wow. So um, how does this um, you know, trauma-informed approach help people with, uh, say, PTSD or anxiety? Right. Uh, help them? Yeah. So um, it really helps them to find a place of safety. Sometimes people who have a lot of trauma or PTSD, they're, it's like they're always on high alert. They never really feel safe. They're always... Right sensing danger in their environment on some level. So we're basically retraining the nervous system and helping them to find what safety feels like in their body. Um, and we're also helping them learn how to regulate their nervous system and regulate their emotions. Sometimes they have really big emotions that they haven't been able to process yet. They're not sure what to do with them. And sometimes they're not ready to do like talk therapy or that kind of thing. Sometimes that's too painful. So sometimes breath work is a way for them to, to process on a more somatic body level, kind of a bottom up approach right. um, that helps them to process those feelings, those emotions um, in a safe and gentle way um, without re-traumatizing them. Um, and it's um, yeah, just, really helps them to recalibrate and gives them tools that they can take into their everyday life. Um, a lot of times it's just building their awareness. They begin to become aware of 
the things that trigger them. And then they also become aware of what tools they can use in the moment as they're going about their day to bring themselves back from going into a panic attack or an anxiety attack or something of that nature. That's great. So I know you do a lot of uh, sessions. So what does a session look a session with you look like? Yeah, that's a great question. So typically we'll take a few minutes to visit with the person and find out what's going on for them that day. What is it that they need? What are they looking for in the session? Um, and then if, if it's a new breather, obviously we take some time to just kind of teach them the basic mechanics of breathing and teach them a few breathing patterns right. um, let them know what to expect because we don't want them to have any surprises in the session that would feel uncomfortable to them. Um, and we always try to come up with um, like a focus statement, or you could even think of it as a mantra of what we're focusing on in this session. Um, so that gives their mind something to focus on as they breathe. Um, and then as we begin to breathe, um, typically I will take them through like a progressive relaxation just so they can kind of get out of all of the, the noise and the chatter in their head. It helps them to drop into their body, helps them to relax and get ready for the session. Um, and then we transition into the active breath. Um, and like I said, that can vary. We may only active re actively breathe for eight or 10 minutes, or it could be a longer session, just depending on Right. where they're at and what they need. And then as the session kind of begins to wind down, um, we take some time to kind of ground them back in, make sure that they can be grounded back in their body, back in the present moment, um, get grounded back into their surroundings. Um, and then we always take time at the end to allow them to kind of integrate the session. So that may mean that they um, tell me about their experience, what they noticed, any shifts that happened in their body or their nervous system. Or, or it may mean that they just get out a pen and paper and they do some journaling about their experience um, and then walk them through all of the self-care steps they need to take, um, you know, over the next day or two as everything kind of settles in for them. Uh, cool. Uh, you answered quite a few questions, uh, Bethel. I have one final question for you. Sure. So can you share how regular uh, breath work actually has helped uh, some of your clients? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have one client in particular who has just an incredible amount of trauma in her background, and she has had a lot of experiences of, um, you know, she will have, she would dissociate or she would faint or different things like that would happen when she was triggered. Um, and so breathwork has been really beautiful for her because now it has raised her awareness of um, she's able to notice much sooner when she's headed in that direction and she's able to stop it before it gets that far. Um, so she will notice it and then she knows that she can go to the tool of using her breath. And she also has several other tools she uses as well, but she knows that she can use her breath and that can help her to just stop and get regrounded and handle the situation in a healthy way rather than having that response of blacking out or just dissociating and not knowing what happened. Um, so now she just does really beautifully. Um, it's very, very rarely now that she has those experiences. And she also likes it because if she knows maybe she's going to be going on a big trip or maybe there's something coming up that she knows is going to be a stressful situation. She comes in and we do a breathwork session um, to get her prepared for that. So she is mentally and emotionally prepared for whatever that big event is coming up. And so far we've had really great success. That makes sense. So Bethel, thank you very much for uh, sharing those insights into you know, uh, the uh, the breath work that you practice. It was really informative. Um, you know, what do we have for next week? Do you have any thoughts on? Uh, oh, yeah, there's, there's so many directions we could go. <laughs> That's all right. I think we'll leave that for next week. Uh, all right. So thank you again for joining us today. And uh, once again, wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Um, we, it was a pleasure having you. Look forward for our next uh talk show on next week. Oh, Thank you. Perfect. Looking forward to it.
Thank you. Have a good one. You too.